In order for you to get to the motherland, you will surely need some money. What if I told you that you, yes, you can actually save money? What if I told you that no matter what your situation looks like, you can have a plan and actually save up for that dream that you have of, for example, like going to the Gambia or getting that specific thing that you have wanted for a very long time now? Because yes, you can save up money as long as you put your mind to it and as long as you follow these steps that I'm about to share with you in this video, then you will actually start seeing changes. Greetings extended family, it's your sister Mari once again here with African Diaries. This channel is all about spreading knowledge and inspiration of the Gambia so that hopefully the African diaspora would want to visit, relocate or invest in the Gambia and also for the Africans living in Africa, for Gambians living in the Gambia, that they would want to stay in the motherland. So follow along on the journey. We are back here at African Diaries and this time we're speaking about money. But this time we're speaking about money not in the aspect of um, businesses like we've done before. Because uh, whenever I speak about money, I basically uh, connect that to businesses that you can start in the Gambia. You can check those videos out down below in the description box. But this time, we are not speaking about businesses, we are speaking about saving money. So this video is about six habits of saving money. Basically six habits that you can implement in your life to make it easier for you to save money. So these six habits are actually my favorite ones. I think they are vital and I also apply them in my daily life. So I really believe in these six habits. Now I know there are other ways of saving money, other habits that you can you know, acquire for you to save more money. But for me, as I said before, these are my uh, favorite ones and I also apply them and I recommend you to do the same. So without further ado, let's go into the six habits of saving money. Okay, so habit number one that I have for you is for you to plan your meals and also cook them yourself. Okay, so one of the ways that you can save more money is actually to plan your meals and then to cook them yourself as much as you can. Now, I am aware that not everyone cooks at home. Uh, if you're one of them, then maybe you should start cooking yourself. Now, I know in Gambian culture, uh, and when I say Gambian culture, I mean across tribes, that this habit of um, the woman being the one responsible for the kitchen or the woman doing all the cooking is something that is um, pretty normal or like it's something that is pretty rampant in the Gambia. Now, actually, in recent years and with time also, this is beginning to fade away a little bit, especially us Gambians out here in the West. We simply don't have that time for the women, only the women, to be responsible for the kitchen. But even if you're living in the Gambia and you can cook or you can prepare meals or food for yourself and it's cheaper that way, then do it. Now, because of the culture of the Gambia and the way things are in the Gambia, it might just be cheaper for the one responsible for the kitchen, the one uh, who cooks the meals. It might be easier for them or cheaper even for them to cook because um, in the Gambia, you basically see a woman cooking for multiple people. And that way it gets um, less expensive for each and every person to buy a meal for themselves. But the scenario becomes a bit different when it when it's applied um, to the West. It's always cheaper and healthier for you to buy your own food, cook them, uh, rather than you know buying fast food or buying pre-cooked meals, um, etc. So anyway, since I said that these six habits actually apply to myself, more or less, I want to show you how I plan meals uh, and how I save money in this aspect. So I actually have like uh, the notes app on my phone uh, since I'm recording with my phone, I can't really show you from my phone, but I did record it and send it over to another device over here. So I'm going to take the device and show you exactly what I am, um, how I plan my meals and how that makes me save money. And um, since it's me and uh, my family, I basically plan uh, for us all. Okay, so the um, notes app is actually going to appear on the side here. But then when we press the notes app, there you go. You see the um, notes and you see my shopping list and this is basically how this is a very brief um, it's an overview basically so it's my shopping list and right underneath the shopping list I put examples of food that, uh, that I am interested in cooking so let's say like um, I, I want to eat venachin, pepper soup, yasa, domoda and etc. These are all um, Gambian slash Senegalese West African food basically. Um, and uh, yeah, let's say that those are the examples that I want to cook. So underneath that, I write ideas of food for this week. So I write, I plan um, three meals to cook every week. And these three meals, they are supposed to last the, the whole week. 
And uh, let's say that you have one meal for two days. It becomes six days, but sometimes, you know, you have leftovers. So you can always pick those leftovers to, um, yeah, to complete the seventh day. So uh, basically having three meals every week is, is kind of good, in my opinion. Okay, so let's, let's say that we want to cook Benachin Domoda and pepper soup uh, for this week. Then um, I basically write that down so that I, I don't forget. And I stick to these three meals. I don't go buy anything else. So when we scroll down, you can see that I have an, another paragraph that says buy. And beneath that, uh, it's, it's all of the items that I need for these three meals uh, that we are going to eat during the week. So we have rice. And rice can also, yeah, like you can eat benachin, domoda, and pepper soup with rice. I'm not speaking about the pepper soup like that you just drink like a soup, like the sauce, the pepper soup sauce, okay, that you eat with rice. Yes, and then you've got uh, crushed, potato, uh, crushed tomatoes, you've got tomato puree, fish, chicken, uh, oil, potatoes, onions, bell peppers. You basically write down all of the things that you need to buy in order for you to cook the meal. So you can basically do this with any app. Uh, you can write it down on a paper. Uh, just write it down somewhere and, and stick to your schedule. If you want to cook these three meals uh, during the week, then do that. And don't go buying all of these, you know, um, snacks over here, snacks over there, and, you know, just spending your money just like that. So stick to your meal plan during the week. Okay, so that was it for the first habit. Okay, Stanley family. So the second habit is called the 14 to 30 day rule. And if you have never heard about this rule before, I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so just hypothetically, okay. Let's say that you see something that you really want to buy, like you really want that Thing. let's say like an iPad you really want that iPad so let's say that that iPad is out of your budget like it's way out of your budget or if you buy it it will basically put you in a very tight position it will basically compromise your budget a lot well the simplest thing to do is not to buy it so that's where the 14 and 30 day rule comes in so it's basically about waiting 14 to 30 days before you buy something new so if you can stop yourself from buying something that you need in that like in that hype moment is basically called impulsive buying if you can stop yourself from doing that then that's the best it is a great way of saving money because when you do that you then give yourself time to think to really think about it and rethink and you know get different perspectives like do you really need this uh, do you really want it or is it just like hyped right now can you survive without it <laughs> what is my purpose of buying this if the answer is no then your answer is no. You know, giving yourself time to really think about it, especially if it's something very, very expensive. I myself, I try to apply this method every time I buy something new. It can be anything from um, electronics to clothes, uh, sometimes food even, etc. It can be anything new that I want to buy. I always wait before I just buy it and, you know, later on regretting it. Just to give you an example, there was actually something that I wanted to buy once. Uh, I remember this. It was a while ago. And um, I actually waited for like a month before I bought it because I was like, let me wait for my next salary. <laughs> Maybe then I want to buy it uh, because it was something that I really wanted. Uh, but I stopped myself. I did the 30 day rule. I was like, OK, let me wait till next salary because then I also have more money. So let me just wait. And then 30 days later, I got my salary and then I just one day like remembered that it was something that I wanted to buy. I was like, yeah, there was something I was going to buy now that I've had my salary. But then I didn't remember what it was. I actually forgot what I wanted to buy so bad. Like generally, fun fact about me, I have the worst memory ever. I literally have the worst memory. And that actually works in my favor sometimes. And me forgetting what it actually was that I wanted to buy. It basically tells me something that I don't really need it because if I needed it, if I really needed it, then I wouldn't forget it because then it would be on my mind all the time. And the funny thing is that till this day, I don't really remember what it was. Like I've totally forgotten what it was, but I know that there was something that I wanted to buy and I waited for 30 days and then I forgot about it. So problem solved. So extended family, moving on to the third habit that you can apply in your life to save more money, uh, which is don't buy snacks on the go. Now this one is a good one because you don't really realize how the money adds up at the end. And then you end up like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize I spent that much money. But then it's too late because the money is long gone. <laughs> so spending money here and there 
on snacks on the go, you know, buying chocolate, buying um, caramels, buying candy, you know, just snacks in general, stuff that you can actually live without, is really and truly going to hurt your economy. And it's not just your economy, it hurts. It hurts your teeth and it hurts your health in the long run. <laughs> I'm telling you. I am fortunate enough to not like candy that much. I don't really eat it much. Uh, and I don't really tend to buy random things either. But it took a while for me to even get there. And there was actually a method that I used. Um, and I studied myself on, you know, in what occasions I just buy stuff uh, just like that randomly. And it added up at the end of the month. And I was like, oh my goodness, uh, I wasn't that rich as I thought I was. So um, I have a bank card, like a lot of us do. And um, I started to realize that I actually could like pass by like a shop, a candy shop or whatever and be like, ooh, that looks delicious. And it could only be like a few crowns, like maybe 20 crowns, sometimes 25, 15, uh, whatever have you. And I could be like, ah, 25, that's okay. Let me just swipe the card and I would suffer the consequences by the end of the month. So what did I start to do? I started to leave my bank card at home. And every time I went out and I saw something delicious and I really wanted to buy it, what was I supposed to do? I didn't have any money, so I just, you know, so I just basically looked at it and be like, and just passed by, <laughs> kept my head up high. I basically had to move on with my life. But yeah, I understand that you might need money if you're out and about um, for like bus, bus fees and, you know, train fees, uh, whatever have you. I understand that you need money sometimes when you leave your house. Um, for me, I left my bank card at home because then I have access to all of my money. I basically took uh, took out money. I had cash with me and I basically calculated what I would need. So if I went out and I know that the bus fee is 20 crowns to go and 20 crowns to come back, I would take 40 crowns with me and nothing less, nothing more. So I basically didn't risk uh, buying something because if I did, then I would have a very long walk home. Yeah, so that can be something that you can apply in your life as well because um, it really, really helped me to uh, this state that I am right now and it really helped me save money. So extended family, the next tip that I have for you guys on how you can save money is for you to not use credit cards. Stop using credit cards. Oh my goodness, I swear. This is the major, major thing, uh, apart from loans, this is the major thing that is really capturing us here in the West. I've said it before and I will say it again and again and again. Because the fact is that we can actually get new things without actually having to put money on the table. Like we don't actually have to pay for it when we get it. And it is a great advantage. It is. There are um, positive aspects of this. It's not all negative. If it is used in proportion <laughs> and in a good way, because you could really, really be in a situation where you need something right now, then I guess it's good that we have this opportunity. But it gets out of hand. You see people putting everything on credit cards so they don't have to worry about it. And, you know, it becomes this impulsive buying that you can just, you know, put this on a card, put this in the card. Uh, and you know just buy without thinking or without actually needing what you're buying you just buy it because you can and then at the end of the day you are the one being stuck there with your fees and with your interest and it becomes hot pepe when the payment is up <laughs> so i would advise you generally not to put everything on credit cards uh, i would advise you to actually buy things that you can afford and that you really need also it's actually crazy how many emails how many texts how many like um phone calls I can get sometimes of um, people like in companies, of companies really like trying to force me to uh, get a credit card. There was actually once, there was this company, I don't remember what company it was, they sent me a letter and they put, they literally put a card, a credit card uh, in that letter that they wanted me to activate so I can start using, you know. So I picked up my phone, I called them, I was like, uh, yes, hello, um, can you please stop destroying the environment? Can you please save the trees <laughs> and not send me letters because I'm not interested. I don't want a credit card. And they were like, oh, okay, okay, we can stop sending you. And actually, after that phone call, they actually stopped sending me physical letters. Now they just send me emails, which is um, more environmental friendly, I guess. <laughs> but I was basically feeling that they were just utilizing trees. They were utilizing paper uh, of, you know, sending me letters that I don't really want. 
Yeah, because I am so not interested. Okay, so that was all for um, habit number four. So now let's go on to habit number five, which is to pay off your debts. And oof, I have spoken about this one before as well. And there was actually a comment that I got from that video. Uh, you can check it up there uh, by a subscriber telling me that you don't, you don't pronounce the Bs in debts. So it's debts, not debts. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, so if you have seen that video, you basically know my opinions on loans and interest. Yeah, because it basically like adds up. And at the end of the day, the end interest rates, they are so high sometimes. They are so high. So at the end, you end up paying more money anyway. And normally it takes years, sometimes decades for you to pay off your loans. But paying off your debts uh, can actually in the long run help you to save more money. And I'll explain to you why. And how so if you have got many loans start with the one that has the highest interest rates if you just have one then focus on that one but if you have many focus on the one that had that has the highest rate uh, the highest interest rate because if you don't get those fees down that will basically add up and up and up it adds up more quickly if you pay off the small loans with the small small interest rates than if you actually focus on the big loan with the big interest rates so trust me it is better that way focus on the big one and um, in the long run you'll be able to save money but yeah like i said before i have spoken about debts before uh, in that video so be sure to check that out and uh, i will go to the next habit okay so habit number six it's basically for you to earn more money. Okay, so this last point is actually the most um, obvious one. <laughs> Obviously, if you want more money, then earn more money. Uh, but it's not always that easy though. Now, if you've got a full-time job, it can basically be difficult for you to earn uh, extra money or have an extra source of income if you've already got a full-time job. So having a side hustle or a side income or whatever you want to call it, is actually a great way to go. It can be anything from like... Um, renting a room or a space uh, in your house or at your apartment for you to earn some extra income. It can also be selling old things that you have that you don't use anymore, but um, that are still in, you know, in a, in a state where other people can use it. You can sell that and get some extra money. You can either do that in person or you can do it online nowadays. Speaking about online, there are actually many ways of making money online. You've got YouTube, you've got um, affiliate marketing, You've got coaching, uh, just like I explained in my video where I spoke about online ways of making money that you don't actually need a capital for uh, to start. You know, do some research. You might find something that is suitable for you. Take me, for instance. I've got my full-time job, but I've also got YouTube. Um, I haven't really started to earn money through YouTube, but uh, it's an investment. So with time, uh, hopefully, I'll start to earn some money on YouTube and that will be my side hustle or my side like business because we don't really have a business yet um, in the family. So, uh, you know, just find something that uh, you are good at that you, where your skills lie and try to earn some extra money from that. I actually say that all the time. I've said that several times, but I really mean it. Uh, and I really encourage you to do that too as well. So extended family, uh, there might be other habits that is basically hurting your economy but it's up to you to do a self-evaluation and to basically de detect what those things are because these things might just be draining your money without you even realizing or well, actually you do you do realize it but you might not realize what it is that is draining your money if you want to save money you basically need to identify what these things are because i know you can i know you can um you know identify these things and do something about it at the end of the day it's all about like self-determination it's all about self-discipline you have a goal and you have to do whatever is necessary for you to reach that goal if your goal is to move to the gambia then set your mind to it you are going to move to the gambia inshallah if your goal is to travel with your family then set your mind to it uh, and say that you will travel with your family you just have to do some things in order for you to do that let's say that your goal is to pay something to pay off something or to pay like for your education or whatever have you then set your mind to that you will have an opportunity to actually meet those goals so take baby steps it's all about taking baby steps and eventually thinking that you're going to get there uh, don't look at the mountain which is the end goal don't look at the mountain and be like um yeah how am i going to climb this 
Rather than doing that, look at the small steps, look down upon the small steps that you need to take in order for you to get to that mountain. I've actually started to say that a lot. <laughs> look at the steps and take the steps, don't look at the mountain. And so extended family, I leave you today with those words and don't forget to be the change that you want to see and uh, I will see you in the next video. This was the end of this video. I hope you um, learned something. I hope you got inspired to do something and save, actually save money. Uh, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, share this video to your loved ones, to your friends, anyone that would benefit. I think they would appreciate that very much. So extended family, peace and blessings be upon you all. I will see you in the next video.